The Second Amendment that was passed in 1920 was surprisingly controversial and long overdue. It finally gave women the right to vote. Despite bribes to the contrary, that took place right out in the open, right up to the last minute. In fact, there were occasions when in the middle of the aisles of various legislative houses, state legislative houses, you could see a lobbyist give a handful of bills to a legislator who would then nod his head. He was signifying that his opposition to suffrage was now bought and paid for. But momentum trumped money in this case, and the 19th Amendment was added to the Constitution in the summer of 1920, ironically, just a few months before the first national election in which women would vote, and women joined men, <clears throat> and they had no choice, in voting out of office the first female president of the United States, and so far the only female president. Now, she wasn't really the president, but she was the president de facto, let's say, as opposed to de jure. And most Americans didn't even know about it. As I look out here, I see most Americans don't know about it today. But the political community in Washington knew about the woman in the White House. Senator Albert Fall of New Mexico was enraged. We have petticoat government, he said. And the diplomatic community in Washington knew. The French ambassador to the United States reported back to Paris that he was dealing with Mademoiselle President. <clears throat> 